Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New Teeth Now webinar. My name is Bianca, and I'm here tonight with Dr. Kirkpatrick. Hey, Bianca. And tonight, we're going to learn everything about dental implants and the New Teeth Now procedure. Um, we're so excited that you're here watching with us tonight, um, and we definitely encourage you to ask as many questions as you can think of. So if you are joining through YouTube, you can comment right on the YouTube feed, and we'll answer those. And then if you are on GoToWebinar, there should be a chat box. Um, but if you don't see the chat box, there's a, a little orange arrow on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. You can click that to pull it up and submit questions. Um, but we're very excited to get started. And how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. We've had a very interesting, busy day today, which is always good. Good. Yeah. Little, some filming, webinar with yes. you, and lots of good surgical implant procedures today. So welcome everyone. As Bianca said, we are going to talk a lot about implants and really important, like we want you to get the information that you want out of this webinar. So if I'm not mentioning something or you have a question about a particular part of the implant procedure or just basic questions about implants, definitely submit those and ask them and we will try to answer those live on the air tonight. So we'll jump right in and get started um, learning about implants. So a little bit about me, um, I'm originally from Kentucky. I did most of my school at the University of Kentucky, including dental school. And then my surgery was at the University of Florida in Jacksonville. And the last part of that slide is one of the important things that you're gonna hear tonight. I am a board certified oral and maxillofacial surgeon, as is my partner, Dr. Richards, which you may not know that that's important at this point, but it's something that you really need to understand about if you come here for one of us to treat you, or if you choose to go somewhere else, whoever is doing your implant procedure, you really want to know if they are board certified. Because that, um, it's kind of the way that we hold each other accountable and make sure everybody's kind of living up to the same standard of care and doing the best that they can for every patient. So, Dental implants, what exactly is a dental implant? We get asked this a lot. They are recommended by our National Association as the best way to replace missing teeth. And for those of you that do not know what an implant is, because a lot of times patients will get it confused with, they think the implant is the tooth itself. And you know, I get this question all the time, but the implant is actually the little silver screw-like structure that you see there on the picture, and then it gives a foundation for either us or your general dentist um, to build the bridge or build the tooth on. And what we are going to be talking about mainly is our new teeth now procedure. And that is essentially talking about replacing everything in one jaw or both jaws, but it's doing everything. It's not single tooth replacement. It's replacing everything in your upper jaw, everything in the lower jaw. And how we do that is very similar to what you saw with the single implant placement we put multiple implants in each jaw. On the upper, we typically do six implants, as you can see on this picture. So you can see the ghost visions of the implants there with, so there's six implants and the full bridge ranging from first molar to first molar, all the way across, giving basically a full complement of teeth on this fixed, secured bridge, all on implants. So it never comes in and out. The lower is very similar. Um, the lower ranges from four to six implants on the, on the bottom jaw. And we try to do as many as we can on every patient in each jaw. But there's a couple things that we look at and we try to avoid. And there's a nerve that runs inside the lower jaw that you can, um, that would be associated. I don't really have a pointer to it. But so with the back implant on each side, Sometimes we can place those and sometimes we can't. But what we do is sometimes we don't need them. So we don't want to put too many in and have them too close together because for every implant that we put in, if you can think about how it attaches to the bridge, they're not glued on or cemented on. They're actually screwed. The bridge is screwed in to the implants. So for every implant that we put in, there's a hole drilled in the bridge that allows a screw to go from the top of the bridge to the implant and secure the bridge. If those holes are too close together, then that can create a weak spot in the bridge, which we really don't want to do. And you would not want us to do that. So 
a lot of what we talk about tonight will be all about the implants. And we're going to show you a lot of pictures, which I think is very important to help get across like exactly the, how we can do this and, and what they look like on patients that we've actually treated here in the office. Um, we'll show you some videos of them giving testimonials and it just kind of goes through their journey and their walk through the implant part of their life with us. And I think that that's really important yes, for patients to hear. Um, because if you can see a before and after picture on a patient that I've personally treated, and then you hear their story of what they went through here at the office, then I think that in itself is a really good testimony of what we can accomplish here. So we'll jump in and start. This is one of our patients, Mary, that I treated a few years ago. And you know she came in with a lot of different things going on was very skeptical if she had enough bone to be an implant candidate, you know, and then we did the consult and right away we knew that she was definitely a candidate. She had plenty of bone to do the procedure and I'm gonna let her share her story. People, sometimes they think that I'm upset at them or that I'm unfriendly just because I don't show my teeth. So I don't have a big smile because of that. A lot of the other dentists told me that I need a bone graft and because of that, uh, I was going to take some time to do it. But when I met with Dr. Kirkpatrick, he just said that he, he can do it. I'm scared to death, okay? All those things just go through your mind. But I know that Dr. Kirkpatrick will do me right. It's been two and a half months since I had my surgery, and I feel great. I didn't have any pain. I have beautiful teeth. Not only I'm saying that, but people surrounding me saying that. It is wonderful. I like the person that I'm looking at in the mirror. I made a decision this year that I was gonna change my life, that I was gonna do things for the better. And then one day I was in the lunchroom and I saw a commercial from New Teeth Now. And I decided to make a call. Dr. Kirkpatrick and New Teeth Now told me it would be just one day and I will feel no pain. I didn't believe him at first. You crazy, you wanna pull all that? And it's not gonna hurt. Nothing's gonna happen. So I told him that I had one more dentist to ask. My dentist, so his answer was, you better off going with them. So I called Dr. Kirkpatrick, I made the appointment, and on June 22nd, I have it done. The day of the surgery, I got there about 7.30, and I was very anxious and nervous, and the girls there made me at ease. Dr. Kirkpatrick walked in and he said, are you nervous? And I said to him, yes. And he said, me too. So we laugh about that. I remember the anesthesiologist putting the medication in my IV. And the next thing I remember, I was waking up. I woke up with no pain. I was drowsy, of course. But little by little, the anesthesia went off. Within four hours after I woke up, Dr. Kirkpatrick came with my new teeth and he put them on and I have new teeth since then. It was a wonderful experience. I can eat anything uh, with the new teeth. I will I'll be able to, to chew nuts and steak and all kinds of hard stuff that I wasn't able to chew before, that I was just swallowing without digesting. I feel healthier. I don't have as many stomach pains as I used to have, and I feel better. In one day, they were able to do everything that other doctors couldn't do, wouldn't do, or it will take them two years to do. I am personally dedicated to helping people overcome the challenges of periodontal disease, dentures, and missing teeth. At Florida Dental Implants, our team of over 50 specialists are committed to help you get your smile back all in one day. Before New Teeth Now, when my friends pull out their camera to take a picture that we were going out or anything, I would hide my smile and hide my teeth. I was ashamed of that. But now with the new teeth, I just show them my pearly whites all the time. And there's Mary's before and after. So you could tell from the video kind of what she experienced coming here and you know exactly how, how it did affect her and helped change her life. Yes, it's incredible. And I heard some questions came yeah, in. Yeah, we had quite a cool. bit que of questions come in, which okay. is awesome. So we'll go ahead and answer some of those now. Um, so the first one, after the procedure, when is the follow-up scheduled? So there's a few follow-up appointments. Um, essentially, if everything's going kind of 
the way that we predict it will, then there's essentially three follow-up appointments with me. I see you about seven to 10 days after the surgery for your first visit, and it's a pretty quick visit. I'm just taking a nice look to make sure that everything's healing okay, no infection. The patient's doing okay, they're able to clean it, and they're not, you know, kind of educate them on how to clean it and how, you know, just to help them out a little bit. With things that, because a lot of people will get scared about, even though we tell you that day in the consult, we tell you the day of the procedure, like it's okay to brush, it's okay to rinse your mouth, but we want to see you that first post op visit, just making sure that the patients are doing what they need to be doing. And if not, we help you out and kind of educate you on how to keep it clean. The second post op visit is about a month after surgery. There, that is probably one of the, the biggest appointments that patients have with me after the procedure because we actually take the teeth out. So we unscrew them. There's no pain, there's no needles, there's no numbing or anything like that. Very quick, um, but a very nice appointment because patients, it kind of feels good to get the teeth out that one time because you may still have some stitches underneath the bridge, between the gum and the bridge. And if there's anything that's still kind of hanging around, we take those out. We let you brush your gums without the teeth in. We clean the teeth and kind of smooth them, polish them, and then put them back in. That day is when they really start feeling good. And you know, two, three days after that is when patients will tell us that, gosh, my gums just started feeling really good after that appointment. And we can't really do it before then because we want the, any incision that I've made to be totally healed when we take the teeth off right. for the first time. Um, but that's a big appointment. And then the third appointment, which is your final visit with me, we call it a final check. And basically, I get a really good look in your mouth, make sure that the gums have healed really well, that they look good, and then we get a CT scan to make sure that the bone looks good around the implants. If the bone looks good on the CT scan and your gums look good in your mouth, then we set you up to start the final bridge, which usually will take place about three to four weeks after your final visit with me, which will put you at around the six month time frame from surgery. That's when we know your implants have totally healed, your bone is fused to the implants, your gum should be nice and at a happy, healthy level, and then we turn you over to a restorative team and they start making the final teeth. Everyone always asks this question, so I'll kind of address a little bit about the finals. So you get two sets of teeth. The temporary set, typically in acrylic, and then the final set is in zirconia, and that's what patients really want, or at least that's what patients should really want. Mm -hmm. Zirconia is by far the strongest, most aesthetic looking um, bridge that we know of, and that's why we use zirconia. But when, they, when I release you to start making your final bridge, it typically takes somewhere three to four appointments, and they're typically two to three weeks apart. So there's a little process there, but everything in the time commitment, all the appointments and the time that you spend coming here to make those, it's all for the patients. I mean, we can make them super fast, but they may not be have the best fit or be exactly what you want with the parents. So we, we space those out. We really try to get into what patients are expecting. We talk to you about expectations, and then we try to get the best possible fit that we can. Um, so there's a little time commitment with yeah. that. But it's all worth it. It's definitely worth it. All right, so how how common are speech difficulties after the procedure and are they correctable? So speech difficulties, it just depends on, everybody's different, but we always talk about that in the consults. They're, you know, they're, and I call it, it's not really warning people about speech difficulties. It's a talk about the time frame to basically get used to the teeth because mm -hmm. it's a big change. Right. You know, you're going from, if you have no teeth or dentures on, in your upper and lower jaws, and we come in and put the implants in, that patient is gonna have a pretty easy transition, going from a denture, which is big and bulky and moves around in the mouth, to a small bridge that's fixed on implants. Those patients hardly ever complain about the way they feel, the thickness of the bridge, or have any speech problems, because they've already kind of been adapted mm -hmm. to dealing with a big appliance in their mouth. People going from natural teeth to this, um, to like an implant bridge, I tell every patient it's going to take you about eight to ten weeks 
to really kind of get used to the change because your cheeks, your lips, your tongue, everything has to adapt. And during the healing phase, if patients usually struggle with speech, it's almost always because your gums shrink when you're in your temporary teeth. We know that's going to happen. Therefore, one of the main reasons that we do a final set of teeth after everything is totally healed, after the bone is fused with the implants, after your gum has shrank down to the new happy, healthy level, then we start making the final teeth. Because we know that if your upper, bridge, upper gum is here, your bridge, the day we do the procedure, goes in and it's kind of butted up against touching the gums. As you heal, the bridges, your gums are going to shrink and you're going to get a little space in between your gums and your bridge. Patients don't really like that space because they say they feel like air escapes, which may make them sound like their lips move a little bit weird when they're trying to say certain letters. And we know that, we talk to you about that. And what I always suggest is just basically talk as much as you can. The more you talk, the faster you get acclimated to the new change in your mouth. When it comes time to make the final teeth and when patients get into the final bridge and that space is closed, we don't really hear that complaint anymore because patients really like the fact that that space gets closed. They don't really have the air escaping and they don't really feel like that, you know, spit free flows in between the space right. and things that you really wouldn't think about until it's happening to you. Um, but when the final teeth are in and that space is closed, it kind of changes the game. And that's another good reason why we do temporaries to finals is we always close that space. Yes, and well. it blows my mind because a lot of other places do not do that. Yeah. They'll mark it almost like we're doing it the wrong way. They'll say, why go to someone who's going to make you wait six months mm -hmm. to get into your final bridge? We'll get your final teeth the same day or the next day or in 48 hours. And in my mind, none of those patients are going to be happy. Yeah. because they're going to get that space and that's their final set so it's not going to change yeah. they're going to have to live with that space or pay and have a new bridge made so yeah that's why we do what we do that's <laughs> exactly why we do what we do that was a great question um if a person gets medical clearance from their physician but a member of the staff at your facility sees a test result they're worried about will they contact the physician to discuss any concerns yeah, absolutely. We contact we contact you as the patient to begin with, but we're in constant communication with the patient, and because you guys have a lot, a big part of the decision making process of coming here to do the procedure, coming here to be put to sleep for the procedure, and you should be well aware about what's going on. But we're in constant communication with your primary care physician and any other specialist that you may have, whether it be a cardiologist pulmonologist, endocrinologist. I mean, we're, we're constantly doing that. And between us as the surgeons or our anesthesia team members, we're always making sure that we're doing everything we can to have the patients in optimum health when they undergo the procedure. Because, you know, the anesthesia is a very safe way to do this, but we wanna make sure that we're doing it in the safest manner possible and every patient's different, and we've got a great track record, and we do not want any blemishes on that track record. So yes, we do communicate with all of your doctors. Perfect, and then last question for now, which water pick brand do you recommend, and do you recommend using a water pick? Yeah, absolutely, we recommend water pick. Not initially, right after surgery, we wanna make sure the gums have healed, um, because that stream on the water pick can be so forceful that if you use it right away after surgery, it actually can blow open the incision, which is not fun, uh, because then it takes just a little bit longer for everything to heal. But after the incision's healed and I release you to start using a water pick, 100%. That is, because you can't really floss in between because it's all connected. Mm -hmm. So a water pick is going to become one of your best friends. We highly recommend Sonicare toothbrushes and water pick. We use a water pick brand, which we feel is one of the better ones mm -hmm. because you can change the intensity of the water stream. Um, but if you've got one that you've been using for years and you want to keep using your water pick, we have no problem with that. Perfect. 
All right, we'll come back to more questions later, so keep submitting. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Some good questions. Yes, Alrighty. very good. Man, they were firing no, right off the bat. they're ready to go. All right. So why the new teeth nail procedure? Well, number one should be to restore your total body health. It's well documented in the literature that the health of your mouth, the bacteria in your mouth, can definitely affect other organ systems. And we know that, and we talked to you about that in the consult, and that should be kind of top priority, is just to create the most healthy environment you can in your mouth. Definitely improves self-confidence. I mean, you could even see that on her first video with Mary, mm -hmm. just from her before picture where she could barely show any teeth when she smiled to after, and she, and you know, you as a patient, you really get to play a big role in picking out what you want the teeth to look like. Um, from the color, the size, the shape. And, you know, she chose kind of a little bit bigger teeth than what she had originally and white. And I love it. You know, if I were doing this procedure, I would want as white as I could get them. But we can make them as natural as you would want them to look as well. From characteristics in the teeth to, you know, different colors. And, I mean, it's, it really is more custom to what you want. Uh, so it definitely helps improve your self-confidence. And then it also brings out a smile that you saw, saw with Mary. It changes your ability to eat because most people who are here to have this procedure are either having a really difficult time eating what they want with their dentures, partials, or just with the infection in their mouth, it hurts. It hurts to drink certain liquids like cold liquids, hot liquids, sweet foods. So we hear that all the time in doing this procedure kind of turns it back to where you can eat what you want without the pain. You're asleep during the entire procedure, and we're going to touch on this a little bit later, but when I say you're asleep during the entire procedure, you're under general anesthesia, which is one of the big things that separate us from a lot of other offices and a lot of other doctors that are doing this procedure. They'll tell you you'll be asleep, but you're really under IV sedation. So you're you're kind of in la la land. Mm -hmm. You're still maintaining your reflexes. You're breathing on your own. Here, you're totally under general anesthesia. You're asleep. We have control of you in a good way. We have a breathing tube going down, which secures your airway, which makes it the safest way possible to do this procedure. And then the post operative pain level definitely should surprise you. Um, we hear that all the time that, you know, we give you a narcotic, we give you pain medicine, um, and most people say that they take it the night of the surgery and maybe the next day, but they're like, gosh, I, you know, I took it, but I don't even really know if I really needed it um, because they just never had that much pain. You do get swelling. Most patients do get some swelling in the face around the cheeks and the lower jaw, and some people don't but most people do. We tell you to expect that. We tell you to expect swelling and bruising. So what most people will tell us afterwards, you know, it wasn't that painful. It was just, I did have some swelling and it was uncomfortable being swollen in my face. But that usually peaks if you get that at the second night, third morning, and then goes down pretty fast over the next couple of days. So it's temporary. One of the things that I'll tell you in your consult, before you come in for your surgery, go out and buy like eight bags of frozen peas. Keep them in your freezer. When you get home, put one on each side. So you've got your face covered with basically ice. And those things, those conform really well to your, the contours on your face. Mm -hmm. So when they start to warm up, put them in the freezer, get two more out that have already been in there frozen, put those on your face and just keep rotating them out. The more you keep ice packs on your face after surgery for the first couple of days. It A, helps with pain, and it B, helps tremendously with the swelling. So the oral body connection that we were talking about earlier, one of my favorite quotes is, the mouth is the gateway to a pretty awesome creation. And, you know, it's the first thing that encounters pretty much everything that keeps you alive, from the food that supplies your body to the air you breathe. And we know that periodontal disease is connected to a lot of different of the organ systems, including your pulmonary system, your lungs. So every time you take in big deep breaths, if you have a mouthful of bacteria, 
then some of those bacteria definitely get sucked into your lungs, which can exacerbate some of the respiratory diseases like asthma, COPD, and you know, with digestive diseases. And this is kind of gross to think about, but you know, you chew your food in a mouthful of bacteria. You obviously swallow that food, which has some of the bacteria in it, goes down in your stomach, and that can cause some of the GI problems. So there's a lot of different things that periodontal disease we know is connected to. Can increase your chance to develop diabetes, increase your chance of heart attack, heart, heart attack stroke, and osteoporosis. But in the end, what it ultimately means is your immune system is just chronically fighting this low-grade infection. And the longer your immune system is fighting this infection, it re can reduce the effectiveness of your immune system, which can ultimately shorten your life expectancy. Serious. That's yeah. a pretty serious thing. Yeah. So what is periodontal disease? Well, it's the picture on the left. It's where the bone has shrank away from the roots, the gum recedes and follows the bone shrinkage, and you start to get exposure of the roots and the bone just kind of peels away. So the yellow, darker stuff that you can see above the whiter crowns on the natural teeth, that's the roots of the tooth. And you know that's just good old fashioned periodontal disease. So the after picture is, that's the day that I did this procedure. So we took the teeth out, cleaned all the periodontal disease out, placed the implants, and there you can see those little silver uh, posts sticking up. Those are actually impression pins. Those are not part of the implants. And those are what we use to take an impression with your temporary bridge to get an exact location of your implants. And that's how the lab makes your bridge fit your implants perfectly. Mm -hmm. And there is no wiggle room. They have to be perfect um, to be able to fit because very, very small screw holes, very small screws, titanium screws that are super strong that hold the bridge in, and they have to fit those implants perfect. So it amazes me every day. Even though we do this every day and I see it all the time, how it goes from my hands in surgery, from putting the implants in and taking an impression with a bridge, giving it to our lab upstairs, and then they all of a sudden bring down this bridge that fits perfect, literally awesome. almost every time. Yeah. It, it's amazing to me. So if you can go back to the slides, this is the peri same patient periodontal disease on the left. Those are the implant abutments, which connects to the bridge. Um, and that's about a month after surgery. And you can see the gum, nice, pink, healthy, zero infection. And that's the goal. That's what we're looking for with every patient. And here is his before and after. And you can see, I mean, it does make a big difference. Just, I mean, look at the way he smiles. He's trying to give me a fake smile with right. the before picture. And on the, the after picture, I mean, he couldn't wait to get that picture. Yeah, he's super happy. Yeah, it, pretty cool to see that. And we get to see that a lot. So if you want to be truly healthy, you must restore your oral health. So who's a candidate for this procedure? Well, if you have no teeth or you're unhappy with your dentures, you're 100% a candidate. If you have a mouthful of bad teeth, severe periodontal disease, and especially if you've ever been told that you don't have enough bone for, for dental implants, then I would highly encourage you to call, schedule a consult with me so we can review your CT scan and your exam. Just because, I mean, we hear that so many times. And then I walk into a room and I see one of our CT scans and I go over the scan with you. So you're seeing what I'm seeing and I'm showing you where your implants are gonna go. And then I tell you, yeah, it's okay. I mean, you may need help from a zygomatic implant or maybe not, but pretty straightforward, we can do this. And sometimes patients, routinely will look at me like, are you serious? Like, really? I've got enough bone to do this because the last three oral surgeons or periodontists mm -hmm. that I saw told me that I really want a candidate and I needed to learn how to live with my dentures. So it's, you know, it really is something that we do this every day. And one of the things, we've got a couple different procedures that help us treat people who do not have enough bone to do traditional implants. But it's not a problem when we can bring zygomatic implants into play 
And they've been a game changer for us and patients and still be able to do it in one day. And we'll talk about zygomatic implants in just a few slides, but it's one of those things where it's one of the techniques that we have here at New Teeth Now to be able to treat a lot of patients that otherwise there's not really a lot of hope for. Exactly. So another one of my patients, you know, and I love when we talk about him on the, these webinars, but, you know, he kind of was fighting with, which, you know, struggling in his mind, should he redo his house and things in his kitchen and, you know, just do a lot of renovations or should he fix his mouth? He was having all kinds of problems with his teeth and his family thankfully talked him in to putting attention more toward his teeth instead of just other things. So he did and, you know, he was a, a really outgoing, happy, funny guy before the procedure. Afterwards, there's his after. And it totally, he would walk into the, you know, the reception area here, walk into the theater, and he was telling everybody about his procedure. He wanted to smile, he wanted to show his teeth off. I mean, look at him. He That's wanted great. them perfect, he wanted them really white looking, and I, I mean, they look incredible. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he was, he was very happy with that. People who have dentures, definitely this is a really nice procedure to do someone that has a denture because dentures typically do not fit very well. Yes, the upper can suction against the upper gums and jaw and have some stability, but most of the time patients are not happy having their entire roof of the mouth covered. And especially the lower jaw, with a lower denture, there's really nothing to suction to. Right. So it just kind of free floats. It's almost like a saddle on a horse without the saddle being tied down. And it's, so it's just kind of setting there, floating around. So not, I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone that, was, that would say they're happy with their lower denture. So this is a, you know, it's a really cool thing to be able to put implants in and give a patient a really strong foundation to build a bridge on that can just replace their denture. And they're not, it's, these are nowhere near like your natural teeth. Nothing is. I mean, it's impossible to get your natural teeth back. We don't have anything that's as good as what you were originally born with. But we've got something close. And we've got something that looks really good and is a, has a strong foundation and should give you the ability to eat what you want when everything's healed. So showing with patient without their denture in, that's what the upper jaw would look like. Hardly any bone left. It's almost flat across with hardly any kind of that arch shape to it. And the lower jaw, she does have a couple implants there, but they both were failing. And she was using those to snap on a lower denture, which is better than a regular denture, but the implants over time started failing with her. And we see that occasionally where patient has a couple of implants for a snap on denture, but that repeated snapping on, snapping off, snapping on, snapping off. That can take its toll on the implants sometimes and cause those implants to fail. Where with this procedure, you're never taking the teeth off. They're screwed into the implants, totally stable, which does opposite of what a snap-on denture would do. Mm -hmm. It's actually holding everything together. So all the implants are braced together, which is what makes them so successful and last so long. So it's a, I mean, it's a totally different procedure than a snap-on denture. And her before and after picture, you know, that's her with her dentures in, and then the after picture on the right with the screwed in bridges and nothing removable in her mouth anymore. So zygomatic implants, we kind of talked about these a few minutes ago, but they're essentially made for people that do not have enough bone in the upper jaw to place conventional, traditional implants. So if you look at this lady, you know her teeth, she's got a mouthful of teeth. It's just, that's one big bridge that's secured to the remaining teeth that she has. And it started to fail, the whole bridge moves around and you could literally take your fingers and grab the bridge and move, rock it up and down. So she knew she was going to have to do something with her, with her teeth because they were failing and she was scared they were going to come out any day. She lived in the northeastern part of the United States 
knew she didn't have a lot, had been told she didn't have enough bone for regular implants. She knew she ne needed zygomatic implants because she had found information about zygomatic implants on the internet, found their website, knew she probably needed them. She tried to find some, someone in the New York area and couldn't find anybody to do the zygomatic implants. Mm -hmm. She found plenty, plenty of people that advertised that they could, but when she went there, or saw them for a consult or really ask them like, so how do you do the zygomatic implants? Well, we really don't do them. And most of our patients d really don't need them. So she kind of found out really quick, there's not a lot of people that were doing, ac well, that were actually doing the zygomatic implants. So she called, scheduled a consult, came down. Yes, she needed zygomatic implants, but it's a pretty straightforward procedure. So we had everything coordinated for her to fly down, stay with us for a couple weeks, did the consult, the surgery, had her temporary teeth made, put her temporary teeth in, and she went back home. And here's her after picture and her after x-ray. So you can see beautiful smile. And then the, the image on the right is an x-ray panoramic uh, picture of her implants, traditional implants, in the front and the middle part of the upper jaw, and then those longer implants that are kind of angled going backwards, those are the zygomatic implants. And those things essentially anchor into the lower part of the cheekbone, bypasses where patients do not have enough bone for implants, and is extremely stable and gives a great foundation to build these bridges on. We got a little video that kind of shows where the uh, zygomatic implants are placed. So it's showing six implants. The two in the back on each side are the zygomatic implants and they are anchoring into the lower part of the cheekbone. And those have been a truly game changer for patients that do not have enough bone because they totally avoid the need to go through extensive bone grafting and wait on the bone graft to heal. So it's, you know, we do a lot of the zygomatic implants. Um, both Dr. Richards and I have put in well over 2,500 zygomatic implants a piece, which is a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Most people may do a couple in a year. Yeah. And it's something that we do, well, actually every day this week, my patient has, every patient's needed zygomatic implants. The patient tomorrow, patient Thursday, and the patient Friday. So, I mean, we do a lot of these. It's and it, there is a huge need. And I think we do so many because A, word of mouth, B, advertising, and C, patients when they're Googling on the internet and they're Googling zygomatic implants, they can get a lot of information on our website and they obviously can, can see that we do a lot. And you really, if you do need those, you really want someone treating you who has a lot of experience and kind of has seen all the ins and outs, kind of almost like they've been there, done that. And after a couple thousand, you kind of, you really know what works and what doesn't. Yeah. That's and that, our, that's important. That's why people come from all over the country. Oh yeah, they do. We've actually treated, I, we have put a zygomatic implant in a patient from all 50 states. That's, in, that's awesome. That is pretty cool. <laughs> and then this next picture, shows what we can do when a patient has zero bone in their upper jaw. And that's what's called a quad zygomatic implant case. So when patients have literally nothing for traditional implants, then we put in four zygomatic implants, super strong foundation, and you can still do it in one day with no bone grafting. And it's just, it's a really nice way to treat patients that without the zygomatic implants, there, there would be no other hope. So that's, you know, it's a cool thing to have in our toolbox to be able to offer patients. So with new teeth now and implants, you know, you'll never need a root canal. Implants are not going to decay. You know, you're not going to get a cavity in an implant, um, which kind of cracks me up that we get that question sometimes. They're very easy to maintain. You essentially brush them with a toothbrush, toothpaste, just like you would your natural teeth. And then every six months, which is very important, just like with me and you 
we go get her, well, you may go get your teeth cleaned every six months. I'm kind of behind a little bit. I hate to <laughs> yes, say that. I'm but a I, know, <laughs> I don't have time because I'm putting zygomatic, I'm going to need the zygomatic yeah. implants. Um, but no, you really, every six months, you go get them professionally cleaned because anything that you can't take out of your mouth and wash under sink, soap and water and brush them with your toothbrush, they will develop plaque and calculus. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, the way your spit interacts with some of the foods you eat, you will develop calculus. Some people develop more than others, but everybody develops that. And that, when it starts to accumulate, you cannot brush that off. You have to go get that professionally cleaned. So every six months you go in to get your teeth cleaned and it can't get really any easier than it does with these. Because you go in, they essentially unscrew the bridge, take them out, there's no pain, no needles, no shots. They clean the teeth outside of your mouth, mm -hmm. screw them back in, and you're done. Easy. And one of our general dentists, Dr. Nafala, he, he looks at it, and it's a really kind of interesting way to look at it. Like patients brush their teeth every day, just like you would wash your car every week or every other week. But then you go in every six months, and he details them for you. So you wash your teeth by brushing them, he details them every six months with a true professional cleaning, which is a really nice way of looking at it. And essentially, it does take it back to its brand new state because everything in your mouth, from natural teeth to these bridges, they do pick up some little stains here and there, here and there with, you know, if you're a heavy coffee drinker, tea, um, tobacco products, red wine, anything that would stain natural teeth will eventually stain these but it's something that can very easily be cleaned off when you go in and have your teeth professionally cleaned. They use a steamer and it just takes all the stain off. So it's pretty nice. And it's funny you said that because we just did get a question about that. So okay. um, he asked, are the temporary or zirconia teeth any more resistant to staining the natural teeth? Well, there you go. So, yeah. and I'll elaborate on that a little bit, but so the Temporary teeth being in acrylic. Acrylic is more of a, it's a really hard plastic type material. And that can be, it's a little bit more porous, so it can pick up stains more than your natural teeth would. Still, you can brush them, keep them really clean, and when we see you, we can take them out and kind of clean off the acrylic. The zirconia is really more like your natural teeth, and actually probably it's a little harder to stain zirconia than it is your natural teeth, um, but they can. You know, if you, if you didn't go get them cleaned and you just kind of watch and compared the color when the day you got them put in to like six months later, then there would be probably a very slight difference. Probably say, you would never even know, but you will when they get cleaned off again. Right. Because you're like, oh man, they, they look and new. feel so much better. Yeah. So yeah, they're... They can stain a little bit, but it's something that's very easy to clean off. Perfect. Is that all for now with questions? We can answer one more. Yeah, let's do it. Um, do we have a guarantee and what does it cover? Yes, we do have a guarantee and it covers a lot of different things. I think, do you talk about that in the end? I can. Like I can, the warranty I can, or? I usually don't, but we can totally talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll address that yeah. in the end. But that's a good question, and yes, we, yes, we do have yes. one. So, back to the slides. And this one, I really want to spend some time on, because this is one thing that, I want you all to read these three items, because the board certified oral surgeon, we talked about that earlier, super, super, super important. You really want somebody treating you that's a board certified oral surgeon, especially if you need zygomatic implants, which is one mm -hmm. of the things that separate us from a lot of other people. Not only do we do the zygomatic implants, but we probably do more than anyone else in the country and maybe everyone else combined. I, don't, I know we do a lot and talking to other people, they do, there's some more people doing the zygomatic implants, but not to the extent that we do here. Mm -hmm. And then the general anesthesia is extremely important too. We feel like it's the safest way to do, do this procedure and treat our patients. Um, you know, I mentioned the breathing tube that we place, that our anesthesia team places. The reason that's so important, and I'll spend just a couple minutes comparing. If you're under IV sedation, then you're still breathing on your own. You still maintain your own reflexes and 
that sounds great. And it's fine if you're having a tooth taken out or maybe your wisdom teeth taken out. It's something very quick, easy, no problem. When you're doing something like this and take, maybe taking out a lot of teeth or not taking out teeth and just putting the implants in, to be able to get the implants in the exact best, most perfect position, the perfect angle, and being able to use enough irrigation to keep everything cool and rinsed off, which is really important with implants. You, you got to be able to do that without worrying about, gosh, am I using too much irrigation? Is the patient going to start coughing? Or are they going to swallow some of this down in their lungs? And then you've got a true medical emergency on your hands where if we have control of your airway because we have it protected with a breathing tube, then, I mean, I can use as much irrigation as I want. Put the implants in the most poor, perfect angle because you're truly asleep. I'm not worrying about if, gosh, if I stretch cheek out just a little bit to get this implant in the perfect position, are they, are they feeling that, are they not? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're under general anesthesia, we don't have to worry about that because there's no pain. You're completely asleep doing this procedure and you wake up and everything's completed. So though, those three things, being board certified oral surgeons at New Teeth Now, being able to do zygomatic implants with the New Teeth Now procedure, and being totally under general anesthesia, those are what make this office way different from most other facilities. Yes. And everything is done here. Everything is under one roof, which we talk about you know, on this next slide. But the consult, your impressions, the surgery is done here. The lab is in this building, so the teeth are made in this building. And your final teeth are zirconia. Yep. Like those are very, very important things to know and understand. And everything's in one day. So the procedure is done in just one day. Now that, I'm not talking about the consult. Obviously I need to see you for a consult so we can, you know, do our meet and greet introduction. You make sure you're comfortable with me. I make sure you're comfortable with, or I make sure I'm comfortable with you as the patient because it is a two-way street. We have to have that relationship because we're going to be kind of jumping into this big procedure and we've got to be comfortable with each other and be, you know, on the same page with what we're doing. But the procedure, the surgery is done in one day. The temporary teeth are acrylic. The final teeth are in zirconia. And, you know, those final teeth, they're made to last you forever. Yes. Um, if you take care of your implants, and having zirconia as your bridge, I mean, these things are designed to last you as long as you're taking care of them, mm -hmm. um, which is very cool. And it's, that is not the case with other materials, especially the way, I mean, when I started doing this, what patients get as their temporary teeth the same day of surgery today is what patients back then got as their final teeth, which is a great product, but it, I don't even think it compares to the zirconia. Yeah, it does not. Yeah. So that's a, a cool thing to offer. So the consult, we obtain an eye cat, which is a cat scan of your face, your upper and lower jaws. And then we sit and go over the cat scan together. You see what I'm looking at. And I show you where your implants would go and what I would be planning to do. And we use that to develop a treatment plan and go over everything. And we do that with one of, with either me or Dr. Richards and one of our implant coordinators. And these three women are amazing. They, well, sort of, you know, I'm gonna, go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take that statement back for a minute because they're so good at what they do. They steal my thunder all the time. <laughs> I walk in and there's certain little things that I think is cool to show a patient on a CT scan. Right. And I walk in and, you know, the patient will say, oh yeah, Shauna showed me that. Or, you know, Mara, oh, Mara told me about the nerve. Allie told me about the six implants on the, on the upper. You know, they, they've seen and been a part of this procedure for so long. And they've been like surgical assistants, mm -hmm. which is very important for, you know, I think somebody talking to a patient about this, they've seen the procedure multiple times and been in the ORs and have been years of experience doing this. So it's very comforting to patients to know that they're talking to one of the implant coordinators, they're answering all their questions with confidence, and then we come in, 
go over, go over everything with the patient after the exam and the CT scan. And it kind of confirms and reassures the patients of exactly what the coordinators yes. were talking to them about. So that's, that's very nice to have on the team. And then a restorative team, kind of same as the coordinators. You know, these guys have been doing this for a really long time and it's essentially all they do. You know, I mean, they do full arch bridge construction. I mean, that's, they're, they're like in the dream factory all the time, <laughs> making these bridges for yes. patients that were putting the implants in. One of the things that really sets Florida Dental Implants apart from uh, other offices that are doing full mouth implant reconstruction I have my own laboratory here on site that myself and the other restorative doctors are able to use. This is invaluable. Having the ability to work so closely with my lab gives me the ability to better help my patients with the emotional side of it as well. A large number of the patients that, that come to us for treatment have had severe dental problems for many, many, many years, sometimes dating back to childhood. Because of the emotional concerns that they have, we really have to spend the time with the patient. That you can't rush anything. We need to have ample opportunity to have questions asked and answered. Having my own laboratory here on site, this is invaluable. Not only in terms of having the, the control over the quality of the product that we're making, but the ability to, if I've got a question with the patient, about can we make this change? Is this going to be feasible? I can go across the hall, get one of my lab technicians, and all of my lab technicians have been doing this for many, many years, bring them across the hall and they can talk to the patient themselves. So we eliminate the need for me to try to interpret the patient's concerns and questions and needs in a phone call or in a note. They can speak directly to the patient. It was so important to me to have everything under one roof. There's no waiting. That is the advantage of having the lab on site. And they are so proud of their work that they come out to see the product. These are not regular people with regular jobs. These are master artisans that create. They truly are artists and they're creating beautiful smiles. It's like nothing I've ever experienced and I don't know of any other office that's like this. All right, so it's kind of cool to hear Dr. Dibbs talk about how important it is or he feels it's important to not only interact but have everybody here in one building instead of like a lab in California. Yes. that we're talking to maybe through Zoom or sending things in the mail, waiting to get the final teeth back, and then you open it, and it's almost like a present at Christmas that you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to be in the box? Right, yeah. yeah, is it going to look the way you want? Because if it's not, he can check on them as they're being made, which, you know, if you think about that, there's no better way to do that. So he's, he's seeing things before it's actually finished, and if there's something he wants to tweak or change or make a little bit better, then he can do that, yeah. which is cool. And the technology just completely amazes me. And you see this, you know, the dental milling center slide that we have. We are, we have expanded our lab to include multiple milling machines. And what these things do is your bridge is one piece cut out of a puck of zirconia. And the technology with these machines and the, the digital side of, of this procedure it just blows my mind all the time how they can, you know, a computer and a milling machine makes this bridge. And then the lab technicians who they design the bridge to be made through the computer in the milling machine. And then they take that out and they do all the artwork on it to make it look really nice. And that's just, it's just incredible to me because to take a puck that you see that white puck on that machine, and that can make, with a, a, a drill and a milling machine, and it makes something that can fit in somebody's mouth perfect every time. Like, awesome. I just, I can't really understand it. 
So, me and my surgical staff, um, Amanda, Zoe, and Monica, and you know they they give me a hard time pretty much every day, but they also make my life extremely easy with the surgery because they essentially know almost exactly what I'm thinking and they know what I'm going to be doing next, my next step, what to hand me. You know, I'll be doing a certain part of the procedure and I turn around and before I can ask for something, they usually have it laid out ready for me to grab. And that just, it makes it very efficient. It makes it, again, safe because everything's kind of moving the way it should during surgery when you're asleep. And, you know, just having, having very experienced staff members and surgical assistants and lab technicians, and it just all goes into the whole team concept to make it as good as we can. And speaking of our team, it takes essentially a city to, <laughs> to make this place run the way that we make it run here. And, you know, if you knew where I was born and raised, a really small town with probably about this many people in it. <laughs> and, you know, to think that we're all here and we're all part of the same team doing various parts of the business and the surgery and the anesthesia and the lat and the restorative, you know, it's, it, and it really takes everyone in that picture. Yes to make it work. And that's kind of what you get here at New Teeth Now. So one more uh, before and after in a short little video with Lori and Tom. They, they're definitely an interesting story uh, with not only their health concerns and their teeth, but just them as people in general. And it's cool to see them interact and talk yeah. about their, their time here with us. So we'll let them go through their experience. I can't thank New Teeth Now enough for giving me this, this smile and the confidence, and it's just a wonderful thing. We would have fallen in love anyway, but having our new teeth makes it easier to be in love with each other. We met about 30 some odd years ago, 35, 36 years ago. Lori was working in a restaurant. I would stop there a lot of times for something to eat. And that's how we got to know each other. I remember noticing her from when we first met that she had a beautiful smile. We just started talking and, and hit it off as friends. I knew that she had a boyfriend at the time and I was married at the time. Then we wouldn't see each other for another few months or talk to each other for another few months. We pretty much had lost touch when I moved to Florida. I had very poor teeth all my life. Primarily it was because when I was very young, I was sick and was given a lot of antibiotics, which affected the enamel in my teeth. So, lifelong bad teeth. I had bridges and caps and crowns and root canals and a whole life full of those things. And I had a um, nice smile. My teeth were nice, but then one broke. I felt inhibited now. I felt like I couldn't smile anymore. So, I'd seen the commercial for New Teeth Now on TV. And I was like, wow, they can really do that. I'd love to have that done. Tom sent a poke to me on Facebook. So I then sent him a poke. And I said, I see your poke and raise you a wave. Tom had asked me to go to a barbecue with him. So we went to the barbecue together and we were having a good time. Then at the barbecue, one of the things that came up was that Lori had mentioned to me that she was having this dental work done. When I said to him, well, you're not doing anything. You're retired. You can fly, I'll fly you down, and then you could take me. Even then, uh, seeing her after she had the teeth done, I knew that, wow, that's what I need to do. I knew I had a lot worse of a situation going on. Uh, at that point, literally, I was down to seven teeth. It affected his the way he looked, the way he felt about himself, definitely the way he ate. It was a beautiful thing when he decided to get his done too. I was happier for him than getting his done than I was for me. At New Teeth Now, we can place a full set of beautiful, functional, implant-supported teeth in one day. And it's amazing to witness the look of relief and the joy on the faces of our patients. 
We love what we do and we're grateful to be able to do it. Everybody we've ever met, from Phyllis at the reception desk to all the girls and all the doctors, they just make you feel very comfortable and it's a positive experience from beginning to end. It really is. Now we just look at each other and smile and yes. it, we're amazed and we fall in love every time we see each other smile. It affects every facet of your life. And we began to feel adventurous, like, you know, young and in love and just wanting to go out and share the world together. They look beautiful. You look more confident, you're happier, you're talking more. We can eat anything we want. You don't have to chop things up into tiny little bits right. anymore. And you're left with an absolutely gorgeous smile for many years to come. We just match in every way. And now our teeth match too. <laughs> so kind of cool to hear Lori and Tom talk about their experience. So, you know, with the new teeth now process, a lot of patients have questions about, well, what exactly does it entail? How do I get involved in it? How do I schedule something? But it's essentially these six steps from the consult is definitely your first visit here. The pre-op and impressions, that's an important appointment because, I mean, they're all important, but the impressions is where we get molds over your upper and lower jaws, talk to you about ideally what you want your temporary teeth to look like and then they make those temporary teeth. It usually takes about a week to make those once you have your impressions. Then we can do the procedure, the new teeth now surgery, and then we go through your post-op appointments and any adjustments that we would need to do to the temporary teeth. Then your next step is to make and place your final zirconia bridges, and then the care and maintenance, which is like we talked about every six months. Yeah. You just get them professionally cleaned. So we try to make it as easy and convenient to all of our patients, because like you talked about earlier, we do have a lot of out-of-state, out-of-country patients that come in, and it's important to try to get it kind of streamlined to where it's just kind of everything's lined up and we can get, Keep it get the procedure and, done, yeah. make it safe, and get patients what they want. Yes, um, and we ha our last question actually, um, it's perfect with the timeline. So what is the average time period between the consult and the procedure? Perfect, and that varies a little bit because um, my schedule usually runs, once I see you for the consult, I kind of stay around six weeks booked out for surgeries. So I see you for a consult, it's probably gonna be about five to six weeks before I can do the surgery. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that's a little bit longer, sometimes it's shorter, but it averages somewhere in that time frame. But it's not, there's a lot of things that you would be doing. You're not just kind of sitting, just waiting six weeks to have the procedure. You would come in for the impressions. That's one visit in one day. And that has to be at least a week before your procedure. Um, sometimes we can rush that if a patient's, you know, coming in from out of the country and we're trying to do the consult or the impressions very close yeah. to the surgery to where I can have the maximum amount of time to see you for any post-op visits before you go back home. Uh, so we do kind of curtail that to every individual patient, but typically it's about five to six weeks. The other thing that you'd be doing in that time frame, waiting for your surgery, is getting the medical clearance. Yes. At minimum, basic blood work and an EKG, and most of the time, if there's any specialist that we need to reach out to, you may need cardiac clearance, you may need clearance from your endocrinologist or your primary care doctor, and we kind of work through that with everyone as an, on an individual basis. Perfect. Um, and, so, um, and so I highly recommend to uh, check out, you know, if especially a lot of you are on YouTube, so if you want to check out more of our webinar videos, our testimonials, question and answers, we have so many videos on YouTube for education, um, as, and as well as our social medias like Facebook, Instagram. Um, if you want to like see a ton of before and afters, we post one a week. Um, and you can check out everybody, look at their teeth, see what kind of um, teeth you would like to get, that sort of thing. So definitely highly recommend. Um, and we actually posted a little video of our dental lab expansion if you want to check that out in more detail. Um, but yeah, lots of great resources. We thank you for um, also sending in questions and 
please submit more. Um, talk to us tomorrow. We want to answer all your questions. So we thank you for tuning in tonight and, and sticking with us. And we, I just, I just encourage you to give us a call tomorrow if you're interested at all, and we can talk with you more. Um, and we hope to see you in the office soon. Absolutely. Thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Have a wonderful night.